All right, we're gonna fill up some of the rest of this refrigerant. Remember in the last video, this is supposed to have 500 grams and I ran out. Well, what I'm gonna do instead of switching the tank, I'm gonna use the low side to suck the rest of the refrigerant out of here. And we're gonna watch the superheat. Watch what happens to the superheat, superheat, uh, superheat and the subcooling as I fill the system up because it's low right now. As we can see out the dash, it's coming 45 degrees outside. Uh, the temperature is only about 65 degrees right now. It's a little humid out. So let's, um, the temperature of our suction line right here. This is gonna give us our superheat. The temperature of this line right there, 65 degrees. The temperature of the liquid line right there before it goes into the expansion valve 112 degrees superheat 28 29 subcooling 6 7 so let's add some refrigerant and see what happens remember we're here at 360 my tank is right here let's open up to the low side it's only vapor because this is an empty tank so let's watch some go in going to go in really slow because there is no more liquid refrigerant so let's see how much vapor in weight is left inside this tank we might make it to 500 grams oh you bitch <laughs> it turns off on me okay let me uh stop the refrigerant okay we're getting close to 500 grams now let's look at the superheat. Now I filled it up with more refrigerant. Okay, here it's, it's gonna take a minute to stay up steady out. Let's see if the superheat should, should, when guys are used to residential and they fill a system up properly, the superheat goes down and the subcooling goes up. I just added what, another 100 grams. Superheat doesn't do anything because this, this is an expansion valve system. So right now, it's still not doing, and this is a variable displacement comp compressor. So superheat is not moving on this vehicle. Different cars do different things depending on how the manufacturer has it set up. Let's just keep watching it. Our suction line temperature did it drop did it uh drop two degrees okay let's put another few grams in there we need 50 more grams so I'll open up it's just vapor going into the, the suction side 40 more grams remember there's only vapor in here no it looks like i will make 500 grams Maybe. And 590, it's almost 590. It's starting to teeter between 400 and 590. I'll just wait for it to hit 590 or, come on. Well, here, let me close it off right now and let's watch the subcooling and super heat. see on this vehicle the subcooling run up remember a, a couple of videos ago I did a vehicle where the subcooling was higher but we were a little low on refrigerant but after I filled the system up to the factory recommended weight another 100 200 grams the subcooling instead of going up the subcooling actually went down on that particular year model make vehicle with that type of air conditioning because of its electronic controls actually did the opposite of what it should be doing. And as you see, our uh, even though I keep filling it up with refrigerant, our suction line temperature is basically staying within two degrees of where we started from when I only had 360 grams in there and now we have almost 500 grams in there. This hasn't changed within two degrees. 
Okay, let's see if we can get that last few grams in there. Let's get it right up to what the factory says should go in. And we will wait for this. Let's look at our dry bulb. So we're at 40 some degrees still. Yeah, nothing's changing out of the dash from when I started from 360 to now, even though it was over 100 grams short. We are still running. Check out our uh, suction line temperature back to six. I think we got all the refrigerant out of the tank that we could possibly get. Look, I'm shutting it off right there and the low side that's it this tank is empty I'm only 20 grams short but as you see when we had 360 5 grams of refrigerant and now I'm only 20 grams short of what the factory calls for we were basically right where we were on our suction line temperature our sub cooling has actually went back down remember at low it was down here it was around 15 or so when I was filling it up, the subcooling was rising, but now I have it right almost at factory. The subcooling has come back down. The superheat has basically stayed solid, the expansion valve and the variable controlled compressor, the variable displacement is playing and modulating the compressor's output. Now, if you just keep on squirting refrigerant in here, it'll allow you to overcharge the system at these low ambient temperatures and basically keep the temperatures and the pressures almost the same, negligible, to the point where you can't tell there's a problem. Then this customer goes, drives away, and tomorrow or the next day becomes a 90 degree day. That excessive refrigerant has nowhere to go. The high side will go through the roof, the customer will suffer poor, poor cooling, and if that customer comes back to your shop complaining of poor cooling after you recharge it because you guessed instead of completely draining out and filling the factory it's because with variable displacement compressors and the computer taking over and moving things you cannot judge if you can judge on these kind of systems that exact that means you're really doing something way over or way under to actually make these numbers move around because remember the computer is constantly trying to move the displacement of the compressor and keep what it has been programmed to see as good cooling numbers where are we at we're still at 44 degrees out the dash whether we were 360 grams or almost 500 grams all right, I'm gonna stop right there because I need to finish up the work order and I have to get off to the next job. All right, guys. And I gotta put this last switch over tanks and get the last 20 grams in there.